Hi, this is Adam from Ads Productions with the review of the white Samsung Galaxy S2 smartphone. There are several accessories that come with the smartphone. These include a quick start guide, a USB cable, a headset or headphones depending on whatever you like to call it. And actually these are quite good because they provide a very clear and crisp sound whilst keeping that level of bass that pretty much makes music what it is. Oh, and it isn't bad for calls either. The 4.3 screen is probably what you'll notice first. If you have the black model, you'll see that the screen blends in with the black bezel and gives the illusion of a bigger screen. And don't get me wrong, this is not a bad thing. If you buy this phone in the United States, I believe that the bottom of the phone will be a little different, as it has four buttons that are all touch instead of one either side of a main home button. Above the screen is a front-facing camera, along with sensors that detect whether the phone is up against your head or not. And below the screen there is one obvious button that is used to wake up the phone after being in sleep mode, as well as bringing you back to the home screen after opening various applications. On one side of the phone there is an annoyingly placed power button, and on the other there are controls to zoom in and out in the camera, as well as adjusting the volume. On the very bottom of the phone we have a USB connection used for charging and other uses, and on the top there is a headphone connection. And of course, on the very back we have the 8 megapixel camera. Some basic specifications of this phone include a 1.2 GHz dual core processor, an 8 megapixel camera with a 2 megapixel front facing, full 1080p video recording support, Bluetooth 3.0, and a 1650 mAh battery. Let's take a look at the software now. When you turn on the phone, for the first time, you'll see the Samsung Galaxy logo appear, followed by a short animation. After you've got to this point, you will notice that a strange robot appears, otherwise known as an Android. It will now ask to be touched. Yep, I know it sounds weird, but that's what it tells you to do. It is important to note that you do not even have to have Android set up in order to make an emergency phone call, as well as change the language. After you have touched the Android, giggity, it will ask you to connect to Wi-Fi. That's if you don't have a SIM card. And for the purposes of this review, I do not have a SIM card installed, so therefore I will be using Wi-Fi. It will then ask you to turn on Google's location service, which basically shows apps where you are without using GPS. And after having pressed this, you should be done. There are various apps on the main screen, and these can be accessed by swiping left and right. Now I'm not going to show you every single app, but here's some of the basics. And here is the camera app. This contains the ability to switch between photo and video mode, front facing and rear camera, flash on and flash off, as well as being able to edit all sorts of settings to truly make use of the camera's quality. And you can also zoom in and out. Please note if you want to see some test photos and videos, I will provide a link in the description to show you some that other people have done. Internet. This is the standard browser and there isn't really a lot to say about this because it is very similar to other mobile web browsers that we've seen. But a fun feature that I found is the tilting zoom feature. This allows you to put two fingers on the screen and tilt the device to zoom in and out of media. And this is very easy to use and works surprisingly well. And this is the YouTube app. This kind of annoyed me slightly as it feels like it's trying to make you watch certain videos and it doesn't really emphasize on the whole you side of YouTube. When you go into a video it will let you know that you can in fact rotate the screen to put it into a full screen mode, which I have to say is very impressive as I'm used to watching these types of videos on smaller screens. This is the market. This is the one place that you're going to find all of your apps and content available to you on your Android device. Much like the App Store, you have to have a form of identification, but this time you can use your pre-existing Google account. Don't worry if you don't have one, because you're able to sign up for one right there. After having agreed to the terms and conditions, you'll be introduced to a very bright and colourful menu. Despite being interesting to look at due to its vibrant colours, it does feel very unorganised. That is until you click on the categories. For example, when I go into the app section, we then see how organized it is because it's split into groups of featured, top paid, top free, top grossing, top paid, top new and trending. And of course, if you don't want to go based on what's popular, the option is always there for you to search for specific apps, books or movies. Overall, this phone does outshine many, many phones in the market and comes at a very reasonable price. However, there are some downsides to this phone, and these are as follows. Due to the material that the screen is made of, it does unfortunately attract fingerprints. One thing that's a bit strange is that when you take the back off the phone, it's a flimsy bit of plastic. This is not what I expected from a phone of this value. You may enjoy a larger screen size, however there are some compromises, 
such as when you try to lean and press the top corner buttons, the bottom part of your thumb may click on the touch sensitive buttons and this might be annoying after a while. I found that after using this for extended periods it does get rather annoying. Overall if you're after a premium quality Google Android handset, I would definitely consider getting this phone. Thanks for watching, this has been Adam from Ads Productions with the review of the white Samsung Galaxy S2 smartphone.